everybody out there in YouTube land. Oh, goodness. I got a hair stuck in my lip gloss. What the heck? So sorry. <laughs> Hello, everyone out there in YouTube land. I'm back. Yay. Out there in oh, land. wow. There I am again on my iPad. I need to mute that device. I am so happy to be back. I think, and, you know, as far as like the calendar goes, I've been gone for three weeks because I was live. What was I live? Like the 15th. I think I was left the 15th of December and then my daughter came home or something like that. And then it was Christmas and New Year's and oh my gosh. Yes, I had an absolutely fantastic few weeks off of, well, off of being live. I was definitely not off. I still was working um, pretty much every day, including Christmas morning. Uh, because my family did not get up early, so <laughs> I had a number of hours to get some work done on Christmas morning. So yeah, so even though you know I wasn't working my normal hours, I did work um, every day. So there you go. But I'm very glad to be back. I'm very excited, and I get to go live again right after I'm done with this. Um, so excuse me, when I get done with this, it's usually you know six o'clock, six fifteen, my time. And then we are going live in our catalog kickoff group to celebrate the brand new release of the January to April a spring mini catalog and its celebration. Woo woo! So exciting. So I'm going to be live for a little while this evening. And then those of you that are Stamp Happy Academy members, I'm going to be live tomorrow night on Stamp Happy Academy. So a lot of really fun stuff going on right now. I have had a little bit of a chance to work with my brand new products. I've had them for a really long time, but it's like you, as demonstrators, we get a chance to order things early, and I always do. Um, and it's crazy because I never, not that I never, I don't normally work with them uh, a lot because I'm still trying to work with what's current and what, you know, is, is able to be sold. Um, and so I didn't really have a ton of time to work with that kind of stuff. So uh, I have been working with it and it's so amazing. I'm so excited. So yay, I'm glad to be back. I hope you guys had a fantastic Christmas, a happy new year. We did, my brother actually flew into town on Christmas night. So we had a very relaxed Christmas day, the four of us, my husband and myself and my two kiddos. Um, a very relaxed Christmas day. I don't think we, nobody, well, I was up, but nobody else got up until like, mm, no, 10 or 11. <laughs> and then we opened our presents, had our standard caramel rolls that we do every year. Um, and then we just sort of opened our presents and then just kind of hung out and played some games. Uh, those of you that are friends of mine on Facebook may have seen our post about my son literally bankrupting us all. <laughs> he first uh, bankrupted my daughter um, because she very foolishly gave him or sold him in a transaction, uh, like boardwalk and like a med what's, what's someone that go right around the corner? Those really cheap ones. Um, Baltic Avenue, Mediterranean. She ends up giving him that for some other stuff that he had and some money, whatever. Anyways, he had like hotels on boardwalk and park place. So, you know, I went through there once before he had the hotel. I was able to pay him. It was like, I don't even remember, $1,000 or some ridiculous amount of money uh, where she was already bankrupt. And then I came around again. He bankrupted me. I, he had all my stuff, all her stuff. So my husband was the only one left. And he had a fair amount of money, but not much property, no houses, no hotels. Uh, he landed on boardwalk once, was able to pay, came around again, landed on it again, was able to pay. And then his third time, <laughs> he was done. So my son was the monopoly mogul and had literally every single property on the board um, and thousands and thousands of dollars of cash. <laughs> so, so that was really fun. Uh, so then my brother was here for a while. He always brings very silly gifts. He likes to do craft things. So he goes out after Christmas and buys like really cheap craft kits. So he had this sticky sand kit that he had us open and do. He had like, um, uh, what is it? Blah, blah, blah. Sun catchers, like you, they're metal and then you fill them up with those tiny little meltable beads and then you put them in the oven and they melt out and they fill in the areas and then you hang them up. Why can I not think of what those sun catchers? I don't know. Anyway, we did some of those. 
Uh, he got us, I can't even remember, Just he just loves doing stupid things like that. I guess you're not stupid. But, you know, you think of as adults, that's just not something that you normally would do a lot of. But he just seems to think they're fun, so he always brings all these kits, and then we all just sit around and do that. So then, you know, he... Um, then my daughter left. She went back to Laramie. She wanted to be down there for New Year's Eve to hang out with her friends to bring in the New Year, which I totally get. Uh, my son went out with some of his friends. Um, my we took my husband and I drove my brother up to Billings because he was going to hang out with my dad for a few days. Uh, we stopped and visited with uh, my husband's mom, and we had lunch with some of his family members. And then we came home, and um, I was in bed by ten thirty on New Year's Eve, so not super eventful. Anyway, that was that was our time. Um, I just really, really enjoyed having my brother here. He's just, I just love him so much. He's amazing. He's the only person that will do puzzles with me. So we did do a puzzle. I am a big fan of Eric Dowdle's puzzles, Dowdle Folk Art. Um, shout out. Um, so every year I always get a Dowdle puzzle. So we did uh, a Dowdle puzzle. And then I also found these things called micro puzzles. It's, I think, micropuzzles.com, and they are little, like, test tubes. Well, they're, like, big test tubes. They're about this tall, maybe about an inch in diameter, and they create puzzles that are four inches by six inches, and there's 150 pieces, and these things are pretty small. Uh, so we did one of those, which was very fun also. Um, let's see. Brenda's asking me, is, has the next storm or do I make sure to rain here in Salt Lake City? You know what, Brenda? I don't think we're supposed to get a storm. Although I mean, maybe we are. I don't know. The weathermen around here, they never, they're never right. They tell us, oh, we were going to get, it's going to be terrible. You know, we get nothing or they don't even say anything. And then we wake up and there's three inches of snow on the ground. So I honestly have no idea. Um, and the fact that I never leave my house or this room, um, I don't care what it does outside. <laughs> Oh, I know what else we had done. We had a tree out in our yard. I think I told you guys this a few months ago that we had a tree in our front yard that was dead. And a big, huge, because it had like, it had a, a trunk at the base and then it immediately kind of split off into two pretty large trunks. I don't know who, whoever lived here before us didn't take care of it. So they didn't like prune off all the excess trunks. So it just had one trunk. So it had two. Um, anyway, one of those broke off. It was huge and it broke off. Um, it stayed attached to the tree, but it fell over our fence in our front yard. So my husband and my son, uh, whatever day that was, a couple of months ago, they got rid of that piece of the tree. So then we decided, you know, okay, we need to get rid of this tree before a wind comes up and blows it onto our house. So we called this uh, company and my husband's, um, we, our septic tank is out in the front of our house and that's where the tree is. So we did not want heavy equipment driving over our septic tank to potentially damage it. Well, this particular guy here in town, he does, uh, he cuts trees by climbing and rigging. I mean, he can, he also has a bucket and he does it the, the normal way, but he also um, can climb and use rigging to get rid of your tree. So if you guys follow me on Facebook, um, me, just Barb, um, I posted a video on there, a couple videos of the guy. Um, he had cut a bunch of the branches off of the tree and the, he had the very top of the tree that he had to get down. So he climbs up there. Well, he somehow, first he rigs this rope. That's probably not what it's called. I'm sure it has a technical term on it. But he ties it around one of the big logs that he had cut out of the tree. And so he uses that, I think it's like as a counterweight. So he had this big rope from his uh, chipper all the way up to the top of this tree. And then in the middle of it was a big log tied to it. So he climbs up the tree and he starts with his chainsaw sawing the top of the tree off, right? And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this was a little sketchy. So he, he gets done with it. You know, he gets that last cut in and the top of the tree just falls exactly on top of that counterweight log, which is exactly what he told my husband would happen. He goes, I've got that set there so that when it goes to the ground, this thing will fall right on top of it. And it did. And it literally like exploded. It was the craziest thing ever. I will try to um, upload it to my business page because not everybody follows me on Facebook. And, you know, I'm kind of not that I'm a private person, but, you know, I don't just let anyone follow me anyway. So I'll do that so you guys can check it out. It was the coolest thing ever, honestly, to watch. So we got rid of that. So it's just been kind of eventful, kind of not. So there you go. <sighs> oh, my son. You guys know the saga of my son and his teeth. He, because he had the root canals done in October. 
Um, and so then today he went into the regular dentist to get the uh, pre-crown work done, you know, where they grind off your teeth and add the two falsies on there. So he came home and I said, well, let me see. And he's like, oh, they're fake teeth. And I said, yeah, that's what a crown is. Well, nobody told me that it was going to be fake teeth. And I said, how do you not know this? <laughs> So then I kind of felt bad that um, he didn't know what a crown was. And he's a little distraught of the fact that he has two fake teeth now in the front of his mouth. And I'm like, well, what did you think they were going to do? I don't know. So there you go. So yeah, so he has his uh, temporary crowns on right now. And they told him that he cannot use them. So he's back to cutting his food up with scissors, which I know he just loves. <laughs> So we're going to dig all the pairs of scissors, uh, kitchen scissors out of the cupboard. Ah, so yeah, that was funny. You guys are laughing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sometimes he just kills me. I just, in my mind, I'm just boggled. I'm thinking to myself, what did you think he was going to do to your teeth? They're dead. He's going to, he had to like shave off the bottom of the one because when they fixed, you know, when they, it's too, it hangs down lower than his other tooth. Anyways, sometimes kids, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's probably my fault too. And the dentist, I guess we all just assumed everybody knows what a crown is. Oops. So there you go. So now he has two fake teeth. <laughs> Which, you know, I have a lot of fake teeth in my head. So yeah, the tooth saga of 2022 continues. <laughs> so true. Yeah. So he goes back, I think he said the 31st, to get the actual crowns. Oh, Wendy says she works for a dentist and my kid is not the only one who does not know what a crown is. Well, that's good to know, Wendy. Um, yeah, I guess it's too late for me to explain it to him. Now he knows. <laughs> so what do they say? Do stupid things, win stupid prizes. There you go. The prize in this case, two fake teeth. Okay. So yeah, so that was all, that was our whole, our whole uh, um, last few weeks in a nutshell. So yeah. I think every tooth in my head is crossed. Donna, I totally know what you're saying. All of my molars are crowns. In fact, I had a dentist appointment over this period of time and I have a molar back here and the gal asked me, is that giving you any trouble? And I'm like, no, it feels fine. Well, come to find out there is bacteria underneath my tooth at the root and it had created a, I think she called it a fissure. Wendy, you can tell me if that's a correct term. Um, fissure, which is where it like made a little hole out through my gum to spew out the bacteria. And I didn't even know that was going on. I had no idea. So uh, they put me on some antibiotics and then they gave me something called chlorhexidine, I think, that I have to inject. I have to go down the side of my tooth, down into where my root area is and squirt this chlorhexidine down in there uh, as many times as I can a day. You know, most I can handle is like two or three maybe. Because then I sort of feel like I shouldn't eat or drink anything after I do it, because then what's the point of, you know, you're, you've cleaned out the gunk and you've just added gunk in there. So anyway, so yeah, so we are the uh, tooth people, the tooth problem people right now. So yeah, and I get to do that for the rest of my life. I get to use this bottle of chlorhexidine. And then after that, he told me to use Listerine and just to constantly, we're trying to save the tooth is what we're trying to do. I mean, we're not going to be able to save it. We're trying to keep it as long as I can. Um, eventually it's going to need to be probably pulled because it's already got a crown on it. Fake teeth are very expensive. It's the very back tooth. I mean, I'm sure Wendy would probably say don't pull it out because she's a dental person. But um, for me personally, it's probably just going to get pulled out. Whenever it comes to the point where it's it can't be saved any longer. <laughs> so anyways, okay. I am going to flip the camera. We've got a few things to talk about. And then I have some cute things. Yep, you guys are saying save the tooth. Ah, get an implant. Oh, they're so expensive, though. That's the thing. I don't want to go through all that and pay all that money. So anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Right now, my mind is get rid of it. So I'm going to flip my camera. We're going to talk a little bit about some stuff that's going on, which I'm sure most of you guys know because it is a celebration. Oh, this thing is telling me to rotate my device. Yeah, I just literally did that. Oh, that was a nice shot up my nose. So, so sorry about that. That was not something anybody probably wanted to see. So there you go. My apologies. 
Okay, let me get my little level on here, make sure that my screen is nice and level because I hate that. That's kind of what I'm thinking, Sandra. She says that your back tooth, no one will notice. Because you guys won't notice, I already have a tooth on the other side of my mouth that is gone. So I'm not too concerned about losing another one on the other side. I know that sounds terrible, but they're just so expensive. Okay, Kathy said she lost her back tooth. So, yeah, I know. It's just, it's one of those things. You know, you got to kind of weigh the ugh, the hassle. And I mean, it's already had a root canal. It's already had a crown. It's just time for it to go, probably. Anyway, okay. So, in case you guys didn't know, oh my gosh, where is my baby blue boss? Hold on. Oh my gosh. I got it. Isn't it so cute? I'm so excited about it. Look at that. So much fun. So this is an exclusive boho blue. Yes, this is an upcoming in color. Sneak peek at a new in color for you. And this little gem can be yours. Uh, along with $175 in merchandise for the low, low price of $129 if you join my team of Stampin' Up! demonstrators right now during celebration. Yes, that is correct. You choose $175. You get this or the white machine, whatever one you like. Why wouldn't you want the boho blue, though, honestly? And you only pay $129. So... That, to me, is the best deal. If you don't already have this little machine, well, I mean, even if you do, honestly, I have the white one, and now I have this blue one. I just couldn't resist because it's so cute. So, or you can just join, get $175, don't get the machine, and pay $99. So, basically, you're paying $30 for the $63 machine. I know. Everyone's saying join now, not everyone, but a lot of you, and you should. So if you have been thinking about joining Stampin' Up, have a very extensive wish list, typically purchase $100 or more at a time, this is your deal right here, you guys. Seriously, you cannot find a better deal. $99 for $175 worth of merchandise, it's a no-brainer. And if you decide that you don't want to be a demonstrator, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do what I do. You can literally sit at home and just buy products at a discount if that's what you want to do. Or you can have a party every once in a while. Not even a party. You can just have some friends over. You can stamp and they might buy some stuff from you. You never know. Anyway, this is going on through February 28th. And like I said, it is the best deal that we have going on right now. And if you're not a demonstrator, you're buying Stampin' Up! products, you need to join Stampin' Up! And you should join with me because I'm amazing. Um, and then you get your, the catalog kickoff would be free to you. Um, yeah. And so would a basic membership to Stamp Happy Academy. Just saying, after you've placed your first order. Okay, so that's the first order of business. The big order of business, or the baby order of business. <laughs> yes, Laura, this is exactly right. It does say so, I believe, in the brochure. In the celebration brochure. Boho Blue. The color of this mini machine is fresh, new, and oh so boho blue. It's also your official sneak peek at our soon-to-be-released 23 to 25 in colors. Yes. So, when Stampin' Up! announces their five new in colors later on this year, this is going to be one of them. Boho Blue. Love it. Okay. So, that's that. I guess since we were talking about celebration, we might as well continue talking about it. Um, most of you probably are aware of celebration. This is the only celebration we will be having this year. There's not going to be one in July and August. So if you're a fan of getting free products, now is the time. You may see my sticky note over here because I do order a lot of different a lot of different times. I just hand writ hand writ hand wrote all of the items that are in here right here so I can just find the item codes really quickly. So anyway, there are a lot of items that you can choose. Oh my gosh, who would not want to get this adorable Owls stamp set? And let me just throw this out there because we're going to come to it. We are doing our online class this month with these adorable Owls and you will not want to miss it. It is amazing. And um, you'll find the link to the class in the description of this video. So very exciting. Uh, this cute thanks a bunch stamp set with these fun carrots. 
this beautiful dainty flowers designer series paper that we are going to be using today on a project huh i just made a paper chart with it and now i don't know where it is why does that happen oh here it is gorgeous gorgeous papers in the dainty flowers designer series paper uh, these are all $50 choices, so if you spend $50, you can choose one of these items. We have the Day at the Farm Designer Series paper that does coordinate with the On the Farm bundle from the new catalog. We've got the Sending Support stamp set, lots of fun phrases in there. We've got this, oh my gosh, this paper is so pretty, the Favored Flowers paper. It is amazing. Um, then we have the In the Country, which is um, just kind of a very fun, very, um, I like to do this where you don't really color it because I'm not a very good colorer, so I like to just stamp it without coloring it. That's my favorite way to use these kind of scenery sets. Um, not that these aren't beautiful because they are. Uh, these people definitely know how to color. That's not me. Um, then this is a hundred dollar choice and I'm going to actually be using this today on my first project, uh, making a card for you guys using it because it's so pretty. Um, and then, of course, the Dandy Designs Designer Series paper. I've shown this a, a few times when I've been live. Um, is this fun, fun, fun paper. Um, will they still have a mini catalog? Um, yes, Laura, there will be a mini catalog coming out later this month or this year. I can't remember what the dates are on it, though. But yes, we will have a catalog, just no celebration. All right. Then, finally, in the very back, if you host a party of $300 or more or place your own order of $300 or more, we don't judge, uh, you can get the Scenic Garden stamp set for free. Now, here's a little tip for you. Let's just say that you maybe get paid twice a month and you can afford to pay, you know, to buy $150 now and maybe $150 at the end of the month. If you want to do that with me, I am happy to set up a personal host code for you in order for you to do that. Um, so you could use it to order in the beginning of the month. You can use it to order at the end of the month. And then you uh, would be the host. You would get this stamp set. You would get the free host merchandise that goes along with those two orders combined. Um, just something to think about. Let me know. Or if you place $300 orders throughout the month, or if you've got a hundred, you've got a couple friends that each have a hundred, get with me. I'm happy to set up a host code for you so that you can uh, get the benefits and maybe possibly earn this fantastic scenic garden stamp set for free. Okay. So that's celebration. We also have, Ooh, Laura's telling us that she is a discount shopper. I believe Laura that probably over 95% of demonstrators are discount shoppers. Um, I think most people join just to get a good deal on their products. And why wouldn't you? That's why I joined 20 years ago in April. I will have be, I've been a demonstrator for almost 20 years. And that's exactly why I signed up. I signed up to get a discount on my products because I was buying them. And it was when we were very new, uh, very poor, very young. <laughs> and I thought the only way I'm going to be able to buy this stuff is if I get a discount. And so I did. And 20 years later, here I am working up towards my $900,000 in sales. I've been, I've earned every incentive trip that Stampin' Up! has had since 2006. Um, yeah, it's just been crazy. I never would have guessed in a million years that, that, that this would be my job. But yet, here we are. And I love it so much. Okay, I digress. This is a brand new kit that has uh, been available today. It's called the Say Thanks Kit. It's only $13. I just can't get over the price of this thing. And it makes nine cards with envelopes. It's got die cut sentiments. It's got beautiful multicolor cards. Look how cute those are. I mean, honestly, if you guys are ordering stuff today, throw this on your order because it's amazing. There it is. Oh, you guys are, Joanne's been a discount shopper for over five years. Laura's been for over two years. Uh, Sherry's a demonstrator. I know a lot of you guys are demonstrators. Hope says she thinks it's 18. I don't think so, Hope. I thought the 18 was maybe if it's from Canada or something. Somebody, somebody verify that for me. Could you, can somebody go on the online store and type that in and tell me just to make sure? I don't know. I hope I'm right, Hope, but you could possibly be right. Uh, Tony says she just ordered it today and she can't wait to get it. And it's going to be four years for her at the end of, at, oh, oh, you said four years, a couple days ago. Well, happy anniversary, Tony. That's awesome. All right. We're going to wait and see. Laura says it was 13. 
Sonia says 18 is the Canadian price. Okay, so if you're in the U.S., it's 13. If you're in Canada, it's 18. There we go. Final answer. All right, you guys. So I can't wait. All right, so classes for the month. I already talked about the OWL class. Uh, that's my online class. This is my class to go. Um, this online class is the one that Kelly, Dina, and I do together. Okay. So this is the one that I, this is just mine. I do this by myself. Um, I'm using the country bouquet, um, a bundle, which I'm going to be using. I'm going to show you a card, uh, with it a little later on in the show. Um, but you'll go out, uh, you would need the country bouquet. I'm going to use maybe a phrase or two out of the happy label stamp sets. So you can add that to your kit if you want to. Um, it's going to include the red and I call it crumb cake, even though they call it burlap. It looks like crumb cake to me. Ribbons. Um, some of this textured um, cardstock, textured paper, um, the country floral, I think it is designer series paper. And then the adhesive backed sequins, um, are all included in, uh, that's the stuff I'm using in your kit. You're going to get some of this paper, some of this paper, you're going to get the gems and the ribbon. Um, yeah. And so here are the prices. Oh my gosh. Patty just gave me a tip. Patty, thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. I really appreciate that. I'll put it towards my kid's dentist bill. <laughs> I think I told you guys that we purposely scheduled the crowns in this year because dental coverage, my husband's dental coverage, you get X amount of dollars a year. Well, he had surpassed that last year with his root canals and everything else. So we purposely put his crowns into this year so that we could use up his allotted amount right away. Let's get it used up. And then whatever's left, obviously, we have to pay ourselves. But um, if we would have done it last year, we'd have had to pay it all. So thank goodness for insurance, right? So thank you, Patty. I appreciate that very much. Okay. Um, I guess I should talk about this sometimes. Um, I've had some of you message me privately behind the scenes and asked me, you know, what is that all about? How does that work? Um, you can probably see in the chat, Patty's cute little guy rolling around there uh, with the $9.99 value on it. Um, right in the chat box, there is a little tiny dollar sign. You can click on that dollar sign and you can give a tip. I think it's whatever amount you desire. If you want to, there's no pressure. I just know a lot of you guys are demonstrators and I've had you say that you, you like to support me if you can. And that's just a way you can do that. If you desire, please, no pressure. Anyway, moving on the adorable owls. So in this kit, you get the happy labels bundle, um, for the price of $76 plus the freezer ribbon, plus some polished dots. Um, and some dandy designs designer series paper you can add on the in the clouds folder if you want i think it's called into the clouds yeah i think so um and then you get the owls for free if you already have the owls there's some options for you to choose a different celebration set or no celebration item it's up to you um laura's wanting to know she asked me something where's the happy label stamp set it's in the the mini catalog it comes with a punch that kind of looks like a ticket edge so let's see, that's going to be on page 53. So right here is the Happy Label stamp set. Uh, lots of fun. So they're all designed to be kind of long and thin so that they fit um, into this punch and you get this fun, you can sort of see uh, this sort of ticket edge on the end of those. And there's two different styles of ticket edge um, in the punch. So you have this one that's kind of a very small scallop. And then this one is the ticket edge. So there you go. Lots and lots of fun. Okay. So all the classes are listed in the description of this video. Ooh, I talked about the catalog kickoff that we have going on. Um, if you are a Stamp Happy Academy subscriber, this is a free event for you. You can find the information on the Stamp Happy Academy website under events. If you're not a Stamp Happy Academy subscriber, you can get into the class or get into the event for $15. There's a link in the description of this video uh, that you can click on to get in. And then we also offer a make and take kit packet um, to anybody. <clears throat> and we charge $49 for that. You get over $30 in brand new product. And you're going to get a pre-cut cardstock kit to create nine cards. I'll create three. Dina will create three. Kelly will create three. Um, so there's nine cards. We'll have a video for all of those cards. You'll get a PDF file with links to the videos and the dimensions and pictures um, if you want to do that. So I 
I think I have a link in the description. I think I have tons of links in the description because there's so much going on right now. Okay. Ah, orders in my online store through the January 20th. If it's $75 or more, I've got a free package of adhesive backed milky dots for you that will go out after the 20th obviously shopping with barb.com is my store i still have i think three of the alpha best class kits to go ready and if you want to add the bundle you can for 64 if you just want the cardstock kits 45 i have four or five four maybe of the fresh cut flowers i do have the die sets if you need the die set the fresh cut flower stamp set is in the big catalog the die set just basically retired yesterday it might still be on the clearance rack i'm not positive but i have some that i can i can give you if you need them uh, my pretty pop-ups not gonna lie i way over went overboard on this class and i have a lot of these left um it's a super fun class you'll love it if you get it not gonna lie uh so if you're interested i have a lot of them left link in the description Adhesive kits, we always talk about this. I always have adhesive kits for sale. Um, they come in these adorable little rainbow striped pouches and you get a liquid glue, adhesive eraser, roll of glue dots, clear ruler, this adorable pouch that everything comes in, um, a, a, a ink eraser, the tear and tape adhesive, a seal adhesive and black and white dimensionals are in this kit. So $49, I think. And that includes the shipping to you. And lastly, I'm going to talk about Stamp Happy Academy because we are talking about it because I'm going to be live in Stamp Happy on our catalog kickoff in about an hour. So if you guys are in the kickoff group, we'll get done with this. Get over to that group, refresh your screen, and at 6.30, well, 5.30 Pacific, 6.30 Mountain, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, we should pop up in the group, and we're going to have a fun, fun meet and greet. If you guys have been in those events before, you know that they are a ton of fun. We just laugh and just we just carry on and are kind of ridiculous, honestly. Okay, so here is my first project of the night, and like I said, I am going to be using the Beautifully Happy celebration stamp set this is a two-step stamping stamp set that is also one of our distinctive stamps uh, which means that the um, variations in color that you see on the sample is how the stamp stamps okay um, this is free to you with a hundred dollar purchase uh, during celebration so if you order a hundred dollars this is one of the items you could choose for free it's fantastic it's beautiful and you won't be sorry so uh, right off the bat, I have a little square that I have cut from the Stylish Shapes die set. This is the second largest. So here's the biggest one. This is the second largest one. And I have cut myself two because that way I won't screw up the first one. If I only had one, I would totally screw it up because I didn't have a backup. But now I have a backup. Of course, now I'm saying this and I will screw it up. So there you go. Okay. Um, so I've got my pieces of paper here. So I've got a layer of black, eight and a half by five and a half. I have a layer of white that I'm going to put on the inside. That's four by five and a quarter. I have a, I believe this is the same size, a four by five and a quarter piece of starry sky that's going to be on the outside. And now I've got two pieces of black here. And these measure, I don't remember, one and seven eighths by... Is that five? Yeah, one and seven eighths by five. Now you're probably wondering, why do you have two pieces and why, why? I'm gonna end up putting them on my layer of starry sky like this, okay? And the reason I have two of them is because I wanted a little bit of pattern in the top left corner and a little bit of pattern in the bottom right corner. And the only way that I could do that with this beautiful painted posies embossing folder was to have two pieces because there's no way to just have one corner and one corner done at the looking at the folder you can tell it's an entire layer so if you stuck your piece of cardstock in there the entire thing is going to be embossed and i didn't want that i wanted it to be like there was a little bit of pattern here a little bit of pattern here. so all i did was i took my two little strips and i stuck them in the folder i think it was like this uh, like this was something like this okay and then i ran it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine and i did the same thing with both pieces so that way i have 
like I said, design in the top corner, design in the bottom corner. So when I get this all put together, it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, so I'm going to add uh, these to my card. Oh, come on, glue, work for me. And when I do embossing, um, embossing, you know, I don't know, Cheryl, I don't know if it's from a set. This It's just the Painted Posies embossing folder. Um, it's in the big catalog. Um, it is a 3D folder, and so it's in the back of the book somewhere. It's really pretty. I haven't used it a whole lot. And when I was looking for a folder, because I, I just had this idea that I wanted something in this top corner and something in the bottom corner. And I thought, what can I do? And I saw the folder. And I thought, oh, that folder would be perfect, but it's just, it's too big. And it would do my entire piece of paper. So then I, um, I am brilliant sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. And I came up with this, and it works really, really well. Okay, so now we have the other section. And I'm just going to add my liquid glue to that one. And then I'm going to stick that one down here at the bottom. And it doesn't matter if they overlap or if there's a gap between them, because we're going to cover that up with our piece of designer series paper. Okay, there we go. So then I have this piece of designer series paper and it comes out of the dainty flowers paper. So it's this piece right here. It's this fun starry sky. It almost to me looks like chain link fence, honestly, but it, it's not. I, it's some kind of a geometric pattern, but it looks like chain link fence to me. Anyway, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right across the middle and then look, we have pattern here, pattern here, and nobody knows that it's two pieces of paper. You're welcome. So hopefully that is a fun little tip for you that uh, you can incorporate into other folders that you may have that you like the pattern, but you know, you're just like, oh gosh, I can't use it because it doesn't do what I want it to do. It can. Okay, so we're adding this to the middle. Oh gosh, and I always struggle with getting these things on here straight, which is annoying when they're not straight, right? Okay, so let's just hope that it is. Please, 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 please. Okay. So that's what we have so far. So much fun. So now we're going to get into our stamping. I'm going to bring in a, uh, if I can get it here, a foam mat. This is our stamp and pierce mat. And I need a grid paper. These are our little grid papers. They're designed to be used with our Stamparatus. But I, I do use them with the Stamparatus, but I use them more often not with the Stamparatus. So I, this is a square, but I'm actually going to use it as a die, as a diamond. Okay. Cause I thought that would look kind of cool. It's just a little bit different than the square thing. So we're going to do a little bit different thing here. So I took one of the sentiments from the set that says kindness matters and I need some black ink. So I'm going to ink up my little kindness matters stamp, make sure it's inky. And then I'm going to stamp it in the corner right here. Uh, so hard for me sometimes because I normally I like to look straight down on what I'm doing, but the camera's in my way, so I can't do that. <laughs> so I have to kind of wing it. I think it's fine. So then I'm going to take, uh, excuse me, this big stamp out of the set and we're going to ink this up. Now we don't need the whole thing because clearly this little piece of paper is very small and I can't get the full top or the full bottom. But I'm going to get pretty close when I'm inking this up just because I want to make sure that I, you know, have good coverage. So even though you don't need the whole thing, you can go ahead and ink up most of it anyway. Okay, so we're going to put this back. And then i got to find my little cheat sheet here. What did I do? And so I am going to kind of come in. I can see my sentiment, uh, you know, through my stamp or through my block here. And so I don't want to overstamp the sentiment, uh, of course. Um, and so there we go. So now we have this beautiful floral image on there. And of course, the stamp set comes with these little filler pieces. Yay. So we're going to start out with the Starry Sky because it's going to be the hardest one for me. Um, because even though you can see through your block and your stamp, I'm using a dark color to fill in a dark outline. And so it is a little, a slight bit difficult, I'm not going to lie. So I am going to ink up my stamp. 
And if I, <clears throat> excuse me, if I was, um, what am I doing here? I got to focus so I can figure out what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got this little piece here that's obviously this little bit up here. I've got the big flower. I've got this side flower. And then I have a tiny bit of this flower in the corner here. So I'm going to kind of bring this down just a little bit because I, I can't see very well. And like I said, I've got dark ink going over a dark outline. And so this could be a little sketchy. I may need that second piece that I cut. We will see. Oh, <laughs> look how terrible that is. <laughs> oh, my heavens. <laughs> okay, hold on. We have a second piece of cardstock here. We're going to use it. <laughs> so if you're blind like Barb, then um, you might need extra pieces of paper. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's so funny. Okay. Okay, we're going to try this again. So we're going to stamp this hopefully about the same, <laughs> same area that it was before. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. This time, you guys, you might not be able to see what I'm doing because I really need to pull this down so I can see. <laughs> oh, I'm just laughing at myself. That was so funny. Here I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I got it. It's no problem. No, it's a problem. You don't have it. You know, part of the problem is I got this block as a gift from somebody. And I can't see with my name right there. I need a different block. I need to find... Um, Hold on, I'm gonna to try to find a different block that's a little bit bigger. Well, this one's huge, but um, I think that's part of my problem. I can't see through this, the block as well, and my stamp is too close to the edge. So let's just see if this makes a difference. We're gonna put it on a bigger, a bigger block. Ugh, stuck on my hand. Um, let me quickly bring my chamois in here and wipe my fingers off because oh, they're a mess now. And we will see if this helps Barb at all get this stamped properly. Okay. We're going to try this again. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I think this bigger block actually does make a difference. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look through my stamp and see these outlines. And it's difficult because this is a dark color of ink. But I am able to see them. Okay. So I'm just carefully trying to see them I'm kind of you know rotating the stamp slightly this way that way in the hopes that I can get this okay now when I go to do the leaves it's going to be a completely different story because this is way better it's still not perfect but it's way better okay the center of the big flower oh really does that work I did not well that would definitely help I should have looked at that too I was not looking at that, Sonia. Thank you. Sonia says to look at this in the middle, which, yes, you can for sure, but I think you still need to kind of be careful. At least I do. Okay, so we got it. It looks decent. I'm not going to complain. The other one was absolutely horrendous. Uh, so now, because the green that I'm going to use, this is Parakeet, and the Parakeet is a lot lighter ink, and so because of that, this is going to be a lot easier. Okay, so as you can see, just you can probably tell just by looking at this that you can totally see the outlines of the leaves through this lighter colored ink, and I can as well. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I got it, do some last minute adjustments, and hope that this was good. Yep, way better than that first one. Okay, we also have this little, I don't even know what this is. It's I call it a blob. It's not really a blob, but it's for this little piece that goes up here. And then this little piece below this bud, this little piece here. And again, since it's a lighter color of ink, I can see much better. And I did this as a swap, you guys. So I literally did this like 25 times. You would think after 25 times, I wouldn't even have to look at it, but I did. So there we go. Much, much better. Okay, there's also this little tiny flower middle that I like to use in the center of the flower. Just like that. So we have a tiny little blob of yellow. Okay, 
Um, we're going to put some of these things away so that we don't end up, you know, getting our hands in the middle of it. Wow, look how off that was. <laughs> ah, sometimes I crack myself up. Okay. Anyway, so now we have this on the diagonal and we're going to stick it on like that. But I'm going to use some dimensionals for this because, you know, why not? We got to have a little bit of popped up action going on here. Okay, so we've got the backings peeled off. We've got our little layer here and I'm going to set this. So what I'm trying to do is just get these two points in the center of my designer series paper. There. Perfect. Okay. Also, in this new catalog, we have these adorable little dragonfly trinkets. These are super cute. They're not really that thick. I don't, they don't really weigh anything. They're very lightweight. And so I'm going to add one of these to um, the card. So I'm just going to press the whole thing, like the body, right into my glue dot. And then because obviously these glue dots are a little larger than my uh, piece, I'm just going to take my take your pick tool and come into these little like places where the um, glue dot is too big and just push it towards the center. And then I'm going to add my little dragonfly right there. And then we can fold our card base in half and we can add this to the front. And then we can do a little bit of stamping on the inside. And since I have my liquid glue sitting here, I'm going to just go ahead and use it. But isn't this just a stunning card? I mean, honestly, I was really happy with it when I got done with it. Really, really happy with it. Okay, so then on the inside layer, here's my piece of white. I think what I'm going to do is kind of mimic what I did on the front and bring the stamp in again and ink it up in black and maybe do it in the corner. I kind of like that look where you just sort of randomly uh, stick something in the corner on the inside. I think that looks really cool. Um, so we'll try and see. We're going to try, we'll, we'll put that circle or that middle of the flower up there and we'll try Sonia's method of looking for this flower center. See if that will help me at all. We'll see. Counting on you, Sonia. Okay, so we've got that inked up. Here we go. Ooh, again, it's a little sketchy. Okay, I can see that top one. I can see that one. I can see the middle. That actually might not be a bad way to do it. Thank you, Sonia. That's pretty dang close. I'm not, I'm not mad about that at all. Okay, let's see. Tony said something. I have some of that DSP. We'll need to do a card with that. The dragonfly in this room. I know, it's so pretty. I was so happy with how it turned out. It took me a while to come up with the right color combination, but once I did, I was like, yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, where is my leaves? Here we go. And we just have a tiny leaf right here. Very easy to line that up. There we go. Oh, easy to line up, and I didn't. Jeez, Louise, come on. Meh. We're not gonna be we're not gonna be mad about that. We're just gonna have to go. Oh my gosh, why do I always do this? I am a person that typically makes a portrait, that's right, a portrait style card, right? This is not a portrait style card. This is a landscape card. So what do I do? I make the inside portrait. Thankfully, it's something that doesn't matter on the orientation, and I can flip it. <laughs> Gosh, I tell you. I'm out of practice. That's not really an excuse, because you guys that follow me a lot and watch me every week, you know that this is just typical Barb. Typical Barb action. Oh, I am sorry, Kim. I did not see your question, and thank you, Tony, for answering. You guys are awesome about helping each other, and I really appreciate that. Okay, so even though I screwed it up, it'll still work. You know what's really kind of funny about this is when you have it positioned this way, it looks just like what you did on the front, but because it's oriented differently, it doesn't really necessarily look like the same stamp. It looks like it could be a different stamp. There you go. Okay, so card number one, done, finally, after all that. I think I started this card at 5.30. What time is it? Oh, that took 20 minutes. That's I guess that's not terrible. 20 minutes to make a card. I mean, it could be worse. Okay. 
get this stuff all cleaned off. I'm really concerned about my thumb. It's got uh, a fair amount of uh, Starry Sky ink on it. We're going to keep going, though. Okay. So that is the Beautifully Happy Celebration stamp set. That if you were on the fence about it, get off the fence and add it to your next order because it's so cute. Okay. We're going to move that out of the way, and I've got to move some of these things out of the way. My dimensionals can go. Okay. Next card, I'm going to brag about it because it's amazing, and it's because I didn't make it, okay? It is a card made by my friend Deb, and it's amazing, and I'm going to share it with you. So, um, it uses the Country Bouquet Bundle, which is my class kit of the month for the month of January 2023. Um, I love this. The, you would kind of think that maybe it's going to be, you know, a Valentine's class. No, it is not. There will definitely be a Valentine's card in it. But just with the colors of the paper and everything, you don't have to have this be a Valentine's set. Okay. Um and of course, you can have Valentine cards be blue or green. They don't have to be red. Um, and instead of Happy Valentine's Day, if you don't want it to say that, you can, I'm sure you have a stamp in your collection that says, you know, Happy Birthday that you could replace with Happy Valentine's Day. So uh, the class will not be Valentine themed. Just want to throw that out there. Oh, we have somebody who's the first time watcher out of Northern California. Well, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very happy to have you here. Um, if you guys, I should say this right now, there's a little, and I don't know if it shows up when I'm live, but there's a little subscribe button down here. Um, and if you want to be notified when I go live or when I upload videos, if you click on that little subscribe button and then hit the little notification bell, um, You'll be notified by YouTube when I'm live and when I upload videos. Just throwing that out there. Okay. So here are the pieces for my card. I am using a piece of the what is this? country gingham uh, paper. So, so it's like one side of the paper is either, you know, petal pink and red, or actually I think it's strawberry sorbet. And then the back sides are balmy blue and mint. And they're just various, you know, gingham patterns so i chose this one here that has the petal pink kind of larger gingham print on the front and then the uh balmy blue gingham print on the back so i chose a piece of that i cut it to two by four just just to say got it cut to two by four um then oops oh i need my scoring blade and i just dropped it on the floor hold on and i've got a scoring blade here so here's my little piece of paper I got to figure out what we're doing here. So if I stick it in there, I guess I don't, you don't have to use the trimmer. You can just fold it. So what you're going to do is you're just going to pick a point. It's going to be, it's about two and a half inches. Maybe I'll just get this trimmer out of here. This will probably make it easier. So at about the two and a half inch mark, which is about right here, I am going to fold this kind of up like so. Just like that, okay? And that's all I'm gonna do with that. So then for my other pieces, I have a three and three quarter by five piece of white, a three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Did I cut that right? I feel like I didn't cut this mint piece right. No, I did. Five and one eighth, three and seven eighths, five and one eighth. So basically what's gonna happen is this white layer is gonna layer on this, <coughs> excuse me, mint layer just with a very, very small border, okay? And then I just happen to have, this is a piece of thick white. I always use thick white or vanilla when I'm using it as a card base. Um, our regular white and vanilla to me is just not sturdy enough, so I always use thick. This just happened to be in my uh, drawer of thick white, and it is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, uh, so it's gonna just open this way instead, okay? All right, so... We have our little folded piece here, and we're gonna go ahead and just add that right down here in the corner, kind of being mindful that we have equal distance on this side from the DSP as well as the bottom, okay? Super simple. We'll just go ahead and add our glue. If I'm 
I'm getting low. I may have to get a new bottle out here because when glue stops coming out, when I want it to come out, I get frustrated and annoyed. Okay. So again, I'm just being mindful of where I'm placing this so that it's kind of right in the corner, trying to have equal distance from both sides. Okay. Now, obviously, I need to fold this back on itself so that it stays down. There we go. Okay, so we have that pretty simple. I've got some scraps here of white, so I'm going to do a little stamping. Uh, so I've got the leaves in this bundle or in the stamp set. So in the stamp set that we have the coordinating punch. So we have this stamp here, which is this large heart and this small heart. That is a stamp. And you can see there is a um, heart thing here. Why do people always call me when I'm live? I just don't understand. Oh, it's my daughter. Well, my darling, I'm live. <sighs> and then I have the leaf image here that when you stamp it and punch it out, uh, you also have the punch for that. So we are going for flower in petal pink. And the big one is going to be in petal pink and the little one's going to be in balmy blue. So because there's a space between the two, I can ink them both up at the same time. So I am just right in the center. So I've got the petal pink and then I'll bring in the balmy blue here and I'll flip the stamp and I'll only put the small one into the balmy blue. So then I can stamp this onto my paper and then I have the two, two hearts. Okay. Uh, then I've got the leaf images. And so I've got a little bit skinnier strip of paper here for those. And I am going to use mint macaron. Hmm. I wonder if I stamped something in there that shouldn't have. There's a spot on my mint macaron pad. And I'm kind of wondering if I <laughs> uh, put another color of ink on that inadvertently. Who knows? Okay. So we have these three images so far. I also need this open heart that comes in the set. And I need to do that in balmy blue. So I'm just going to add that to my balmy blue. And then before I actually punch this out, just because it'll be a little bit easier for me, I have the sentiment from the stamp set that says, I love that we are friends. Well, clearly that whole sentiment is not going to fit in the heart. And I only want the word friend. So I'm going to take some scotch tape and I'm going to do what I like to do a lot of the times. I like to mask stuff and I'm pretty good at it. I use scotch tape. And I'm going to mask everything around the word uh, with my tape. And I may use multiple pieces of tape. So sometimes I try to use like, you know, smaller pieces or whatever. So right here is a word. And then this is the word friends, plural, but I only want the D. So I'm going to cover up the S here with my tape. And you could use a Stampin' Write marker too um, if you didn't have tape or you don't want to go through this trouble of doing this because I mean, yeah, it's a little time consuming and it can be a pain in the rear end. But it works pretty good. Did I get that? I'm trying to use my eyeballs and they don't always want to work. Okay, let me take a look here. I think that I have that. So now I'm going to ink it up in the balmy blue. And then I'm just going to rip off the tape here. But you don't want to touch it because it has ink all over it. So be very careful. Oh my gosh, I don't want this in blue. I wanted it in green. <laughs> uh. There are days and there are days. Okay, I'm going to try to do it with just a marker. We're going to see what happens. All right, we're going to spank it dry, and we're going to bring in a mint macaron marker, and we're going to see if we can do this and just get the word friend. Okay, so I'm going to start here at the end of the word, and, and I don't know if this is going to work because this mint marker is pretty light. And I don't know. We'll see. If it doesn't work, I probably have this already completed somewhere on a table around here. 
because I was working on copying this card earlier today. All right, here we go. We're going to huff on it. And we're going to stamp it right here. Ugh, that looks terrible. Hold on. Oh, I guess I don't. I have it in a different color. Would that still work? No. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, you're going to get to watch that tremendously painful and boring process one more time. Because clearly, I was not paying attention at all to what I was doing. Okay. So, we're going to try this again. See if we can get it without it taking too long. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. Okay. Well, I'm glad you guys find humor in this. <laughs> I mean, I do too. It's just, it's typical Barb. That's just, it is what it is. This kind of stuff, it's like that Murphy's Law, you know? If it can happen, it will happen to me. So, okay, now I have to stamp the heart again. Well, I have a heart. We're going to just try to do this. We're going to try to do this. Here's the stamp. All right. Yeah, these are teaching moments, Cynthia says. <laughs> teaching moments for all of us, not just you guys. Okay. There we go. We're going to huff on it. And we're going to stamp it right in here. Oh, come on. So much better. Now, let's look at the difference. Not that I'm not a fan of markering stamps. However, markers work a lot better on rubber stamps than they do on photopolymer stamps. Okay? It's just, it's a fact. Photopolymer does not accept the ink as well as the rubber um, when you're using a marker. Why? I have no idea. It's just, it is what it is. Okay. So, we've got that rid of. We need to punch out our leaves. And so see how that lines up. So when you're doing leaves, I highly recommend using like scraps, like skinny scraps. Like that was even way too big of a scrap. It should have been like an inch or something like that. Okay, so now we're going to do this. And my piece of paper is like almost too small. There we go. Okay. <laughs> ah. Okay, Trish said, see you guys learn something, all is good. Yeah, good, I'm glad. Okay, so I need this, 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 and this. The rest of the stuff I don't need. Okay, so back to our card. Here it is. We also need a piece of this new fun ribbon. Uh, where is it, Barb? Well, of course, I can't find it. Oh, maybe. I'm getting ready to do product shares. So I've got a bunch of things prepared for my product shares. And that's where I had this ribbon. Okay. So this is my part of the share. Ugh. This, okay, this is the ribbon. I've already cut it. So you can see that it's kind of ombre. Ombre blue and white. Very pretty. So we are just going to have a little piece of ribbon go across the card well we want it to look the same so we have actually I'm going to cut hold on I need to cut this at a different angle I need to cut it like this and these are my ribbon scissors a lot of you guys probably still have these Stampin' Up! sold these many moons ago and then they discontinued them but they're still the best they're kind of like if your mom had fabric scissors in the house and you would get in trouble if you even looked at them. That is how those kind of scissors were in my house with my children. Don't even look at them. That was the rule. Okay. So I've got a little chunk here. I didn't even measure it. I just kind of measured it so that it went where I wanted it to go. I'm going to put one glue dot on there. And then I'm just going to lay it across like this. Okay. Then I'm just going to add my my hearts. I'm just going to throw this stuff on there. So glue booger on that. That's annoying. Okay. So this is going to go something like this. 
I know you guys had the scissors. I know your moms had scissors too. Because, you know, that moms made our clothes. I mean, I don't know. Do people still do that? Do people still make clothes for their kids? I, I don't know. I never did. Uh, most of the reason why I didn't was because I was terrible at sewing. Um, I did take a like, sewing class in junior high school. And we had to make an outfit. And my zipper didn't work. <laughs> so in the fashion show, I had to have it, my pants pinned closed. How embarrassing is that? I mean, nobody knew, but I knew. Okay, so we're adding that. We've got our little leaves here. So the kind of fun part about this card is this folded piece. I mean, it's just it's just kind of fun. You don't, you don't always see that. So I hope you guys liked it. Okay, and then our last little leaf is going to go underneath this. If I can stuff it under there. There we go, like so. Okay, so then on our little blue hearts, we have these adorable... Connie said she made an apron in 8th grade and it was ugly. I think I made an apron in 8th grade too. I'm sure mine was ugly as well. So we're going to use... I think we're going to use a blue sequin because these sequins are just so pretty. So here is a blue one. It's a very iridescent. Uh, there's two different sizes. There's a sheet of small and a sheet of large. And in the catalog, they don't look that good in the catalog. I'm not going to lie. They are beautiful in real life. Um, I am including these in my class, my country bouquet class. So you get the blue that have hints of green in them. So you've got like the balmy and the mint. And then you've got the pink here that has like the uh, petal pink. Uh, beautiful. And then you have the gold. So these are way, way, way better in person than they show in the catalog or even in the online store. So uh, this is what they really look like, not how the catalog has them shown. Okay. So now we're just going to add these two layers to the front and we're done. So I want to give a big shout out to my friend Deb Snyder because this is her swap card and I just got it and I loved it so much that I wanted to share it with all of you because I thought that you would enjoy it and the fact that it's got that fun. Now, of course, this wouldn't work with every designer series paper, you know. Um, you definitely want to uh, pick and choose your designer series papers because, you know, some of them aren't designed to go together front to back. So um, these particular gingham patterns definitely are. Uh, you can just, you know, use the coordinating colors that you find on the papers. and They're so pretty. Okay, so we're going to add not upside down. We don't want it upside down. We want it right side up, Barb. Okay, so we have the front. And then for the inside, I decided to take a two separate, two different stamps. Where's the stamp set that these came out of? It's Happy Labels. What did I do with it? Is it in here? Yes. So I have chosen the two phrases, you've got the biggest heart and life is better with you. So we've got friend on the outside. That's, wait a minute. That's not even my stamp. Where the heck? What does this even say? You've got the biggest heart. Just wanted to say. Somehow I messed this up. No, wait a minute. Ah, something's wrong here. I put some of the wrong stuff in the bucket or something. Did I? Okay, start over. We're going to go with it because it'll work. So it says, friend, you've got the biggest heart. Yeah. Okay, is that what I wanted to say? Oh, no. Wait a minute. Here it is. What I wanted to say was, I'm so happy you were born. Life is better with you. I was like, that is not what I wanted this to say. What is going on? Okay. We're going to do it in balmy blue. So I just put both of them on the same clear block. One right on top of the other. Uh, we're going to hope that they're straight. And we're going to hope that I can stamp them straight. Since I've been having such a fantastic time stamping tonight. Oh, yay. It did work out. Okay. And I'm going to actually do this little heart again. This open, this open heart. And I'm going to stamp it in the mint. And I'm going to stamp it down here in the corner. Somewhat off of the edge. Okay just like that. There it is. That's what I wanted it to say. Final answer, as Dina would say. That's my final answer. 
Okay, so that's the card. Super cute. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, the bundle is amazing. You won't be sorry if you get the class and the bundle from me, or if you already have the bundle, um, you can just get the class kit. Um, so yeah. All right, so I'm going to put my ribbon back. I'm going to put that away. And we're going to bring in our final project, which uses the owls. So cute. All right, since I have to go live um, soon-ish here, I am just going to shove everything out of the way. Um, and then I'll throw it all in a bucket, and then I'll be live again. So we'll be chit-chatting a little bit more later. Okay. So this card, I am going to use the adorable owls because why, how could you not? They are so stinking cute. So we've got the adorable owls. Um, I did pull out the, what are these called? Something fancy dies. Oh, you guys are going to case that card. Deb will be thrilled. I will let her know. Um, and so I'm going to use one of the labels, tags, whatever you want to call this from this set. So this is fun. This is the largest um, one of this. So we're using that. Um, I'm also going to use this little edge piece out of the Desert Details dies. Now, we have other dies that have edge pieces in them. This is just a new one, so I wanted to share it with you. So it's an edge border kind of piece. It's actually really fun. Um, we are also using, maybe that's where I had that other phrase, something fancy, I think. Well, we'll see when we get there because I don't remember what I was doing. All right, so I have my pieces of cardstock cut. This is a really simple card. It's a standard layout. It's a piece of cardstock with a piece of designer series paper with a border to separate the piece of designer series paper from the layer, whether you use ribbon or a piece of cardstock or something like this that's kind of fun. Separate that out. We're using the Dandy Designs Designer Series Paper. This is a free item uh, that you can choose with your $100 order during celebration and I'm trying to find my cheater uh, thing so I can show you all the patterns. Aha! Found it. So this is the paper. Free with a $100 purchase. It is 12 by 12 sheets and you get 48 of them in the package. The package is huge. So really exciting. Um, I gotta hurry because I gotta I gotta be live in 20 minutes. So we've got that. We have our cute little owl with the birthday hat on. So let me oh my gosh you guys are laura said she chose that paper that paper is so cute okay we're gonna add our little friend right where's my where's my sample this is the swap card that i well actually my daughter designed this for me while she was here at thanksgiving because i have had these products since thanksgiving oh my gosh that is like the worst stamping job in the history of, of ever pay attention barb okay start again this is the wrong side of the tag, but it's going to be fine. See, I should have cut two tags. If I would have cut two tags, I wouldn't have screwed that up. Okay. So we have a little phrase from the stamp set, the owl set that says, my friend. So I'm going to stamp that down here at the bottom. Hopefully it's going to be straight and centered. There it is. Trish said it wasn't that bad. <laughs> You're very nice, Trish. <laughs> I thought it was horrendous. Okay. Let's only because I can do better. That that's the biggest thing. You know, I know that I can stamp better. And so when you know when I'm stamping, I do try to do my best work, you know. Um, and so that's why I redid that because I knew that I could stamp that better because that was that was bad. All right, this has a tiny little edge on it that I'm going to cut off because my designer series paper is not quite as long as my layer. So this is a tiny little trimmer that Stampin' Up! did offer a couple of years ago free to people that joined Stampin' Up! Um, they don't sell it or anything, but I do, I believe I have it linked in the description of this video. If you guys are interested in a little mini photo trimmer like this, it's really handy. I keep it right here on my desk. It never leaves. So I always have a very small, now, of course it doesn't cut like, you know, a full sheet of paper in half, which that's fine. I just use it to cut smaller pieces and it's just amazing. And I love it. And you can get it in, uh, from Amazon. Um, and I do have that linked below. Okay. So then this little guy is going to be my kind of divider piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little bit of glue across that. And I'm going to put it right up against the edge of the designer series paper. So while that's kind of drying, I'm going to bring in some Stampin' Blends 
and I'm going to color this. So I'm using petal pink. So I've got the dark petal pink that I'm going to use for uh, the kind of top part of the owl's head. And of course, you know, I know owls aren't petal pink. I get that. But you know what? I kind of feel like it's like with flowers. It can be whatever color you need it to be. If you need it to be dark petal pink, by all means, your owl can be dark petal pink. Okay? And then the rest of it's going to be a light petal pink. And I actually should have checked this marker before I went live to make sure there was still ink in it because my daughter did color a lot of owls um, for me when she did my swaps. I think she did 25 or 30 of them. Um, I didn't need that many, but I do have some extras now that I can use as thank yous for my team. Um, or I just had a team member, you guys, hit $100,000 in sales. I'm so excited for her. Um, it's amazing. She's been a demonstrator for a while. And I'm just really, really happy for her. So I have a little present that I'm going to be sending her. Um, I'm going to make an announcement on my team page. Um, hopefully tonight after I get done with my meet and greet. Um, I've got a few things I've got to do, so I'll be up late tonight uh, working. But uh, yeah, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited for her. So congratulations. I don't want to say who it is just yet. Because uh, I do think I have some team members on here. And I want it to be a surprise for them. Some of them probably already know. Because we've talked about it um, in some of our team meetings. That she was getting close. So yeah, she hit that today. So <laughs> so exciting. Okay. Um, on the back of this, I am going to add a little bit of ribbon. This is our fresh freezer ribbon. Oh, that pair of scissors is not sharp. Um, this is also the ribbon that we are including in the kit this month for this owl class. So um, it goes with this paper really, really well. You do get some of this paper also. Okay, and then I'm going to add that with some dimensionals. Where did they go? I just literally had the big ones sitting here a minute ago, and now I, I don't know what happened to them. And my ribbon isn't staying down, so I am going to use a dimensional and make it. Oh, that was like two dimensionals. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So now I'm kind of starting to panic because I got to be live again here pretty soon. <laughs> and I don't want you guys to not see, you know, the meet and greet because it's always fun. We always have a good time. Uh, so you never know where it's going to go with the three of us when we're together. Okay, so we're going to add that like that. We're going to trim off the excess piece here. Laura says she's going to check out that thing. And I do have a bunch of crafty items listed in the description of this video. Um, if you want like to see what I actually use, like some business items, some photography items, some stamping items, um, you can uh, check the link that goes directly to my blog that has a bunch of stuff listed. Um, I do make a tiny commission off of that stuff. Um, it's enough to buy, I don't know, like a bag of candy every month or something. And I do promise to eat it while I'm making cards for you guys. Okay, so there is the front of the card. I do want to add a little gem. This is Iridescent Pastel Gems. These are brand new. And I feel like this big one here, I'm just going to stick it right there at the top to cover up his um, little poopy ball on his birthday hat. Because it looks to me like petal pink. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Then we do have the inside. And this is where I think I had those other things. I'm so happy you were born. Oh, that's the one I just... Ugh, that's the one I just used, isn't it? <laughs> no, it isn't. This is what I wanted to do, I think. Where is that card I just made? I'm so happy you were born. Life is better with you. Okay, that's what I thought. So that's not what I want to use. I want to use this that says, my friend just wanted to say, and then there's another sentiment around here somewhere. I love that we are friends. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so here's another sentiment. I'm going to put it on a block. I'm going to try to find a block that I can use quickly here. Just wanted to say, okay. So we'll do that in coral. All right. And I can't remember where this came from. I kind of feel like it came from the one of the presets. Okay. Is it in this? Something fancy? No. Um, 
Did it come in one of these? Just wanted to say, hmm, no. Is it, it's gotta be in the celebration one. Where's my celebration brochure? Here it is. I feel like it must be in this other stamp set here. There's a sentiment set in here. Let's just see. Just wanted to say, huh, no. <laughs> came from? I have no idea. Oh, ooh, did it come out of this? The uh, heart thing? Yes. Okay, this is where it came from. It came from this, the country bouquet. Thank you guys. Jeez Louise. All these brand new things. It's going to take me a little while to get used to what goes with what. So just wanted to say, and then I'm going to say, I love that we are friends. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. So now I'm going to ink up the, I love that we are friends in fresh freesia. And I'm going to stamp that below. So we're going to spank it dry. And again, we're going to try to make it straight. No guarantees, but I think it worked out. So yay. Okay, so we've got our cute little owl, our fun paper. We've got, ugh, my seal is empty now. Well, I guess it's a good thing I've got to go because I don't have any more adhesive. Come on, seal plus. I you know you can work. There we go. All right, so if you guys are members of our catalog kickoff group, head over there and just wait. We'll pop up, the three of us, and there it is. So I want to thank you guys again for watching me tonight. I hope you learned some things. <laughs> watching me make mistakes is always a good time. Um, I always appreciate your orders at shoppingwithbarb.com if you are so inclined. Thank you again, Patty, for the tip this evening. I appreciate that very much. And the links to all my classes are in the description of this video, along with some other items. And if you have questions or anything like that, feel free to email me, barb at barbstamps.com. I'm happy to help you, and I will see you guys over in the other group. Bye-bye.